all my weirdos out there. So we are going to be working on cute anime animals for this video. And you may have noticed in the last video and in this video there is a bit of an outline of uh, something underneath the paper. Well that's because I've already pre-drawn the, uh, the class and it's got all my little notes and reminders and such underneath it. And I'm going to show you how to do that while basically keeping all my notes right here. It allows me to stay in time uh, and keep from going overboard. So I typically, whenever I do cute little animals, and a thing to keep in mind when you do cute little animals, is you want a rough idea of how big you want the body. So I'm going to be... And I want it to kind of have this little lean to it. So there's my rough body shape. Now in this body shape we don't count legs necessarily, we don't count arms, and later on we don't count the ears. We just count the main portion of the body. So I've got basically how big I want the body to be. Now if I take that body and divide it up into two, that's roughly how big you want the head to be. You want, worst case scenario, when it comes to cutesy animals, chibi animals, the like, you, any, any of those style of drawings, you want them to be roughly either no bigger than half of the body, although there, I'll take that back, you either want the head to be the same size as the body, but you don't want the head to be any smaller than one third of the whole body. So, or at least, you know, the third of the whole, the entirety plus head. So if I make this head a third of the overall size, it needs to be about half of this body here. Cats are going to fight, of course. Guys, please, everybody out. So if we go along with the rough idea of what we did when we were drawing our person and trying to get the eyes in the vague area, get, you know, everything in the vague area, we're going to put this off to the side here and try to get basically, you know, your proportions, thereabouts, booties right here. So actually I need to change that. And there we go. Now things can dip in and out of these proportioned areas, but this is a vague idea of one third, that's the head, one third, the head is the same size as this one third, head is route about the same size as that third. And then there's the other chibi style where you can do a head on a body, but the body is like this big kind of got a little bobblehead thing going on there. And in this situation of chibi, we are essentially, the head is one half of the overall and the head is the same size as the body itself. Vague rules to go by. Never is anything set in stone. All right, so we got our body. And I'm gonna draw my little head in. Now always remember, light, draw lightly, so that way things are erasable, it makes life so much easier. Now if you do use your um, mechanical pencils, any kind of pencils at all, but if there is an eraser on it that usually smudges, I love these super duper cheap little erasers that go on the tips of pencils. These guys, I've never ran into a brand that smudges, they're amazing. And they're cheap. I'm always about bargain, bargain art. Doesn't mean you sell your art for a bargain, but in order for you to make a little bit of extra profit with your artwork in the future, should that be your thing. So, all right, there's my body. There's my little head. And let's see, I know where I want my tail roughly, and I'm gonna make my tail nice and swooshy because I have always been one of those people that likes swooshy tails. Always wanted a Turkish Angora cat, so. 
Now I've already predetermined, obviously, I've shown you what the drawing is underneath, what, how I want my tail to look. You can do a nice thin tail. You do not have to do this as your tail. You can just, if you want a nice easy tail, you can just kind of cap off at the end and make it all nice and swooshy. Be a very long tail for a cat, but you know, you get the idea, right? None of this here that we're going to be doing is going to be entirely set in stone. It is going to be very flexible. I'm going to show you how to do the basic body and then you can add, subtract, do what you want to make it your own. So we got all this and we already know what we are shooting for underneath. We got this over the shoulder kind of look. Now how I did that one, um, uh, is by the body shape. I took a photo of my cat when he was looking over his shoulder. I called his name and this is the appearance he gave me. And then I drew his basic body outline. And then let's see here. Uh, he has a butt, he has a little booty. So we know about that. That means there's gonna be a leg down here somewhere. Now, you can always make your legs a little bit more rounded. I do tend to add a little bit of realism to my anime. Uh, from observation and I know that a cat's knee a lot of animals knees uh, it's a little flatter right here but if you watch animes like Sailor Moon and whatnot you're gonna just have this nice little rounded in right there and you can go with it however you like so this is where kitty is essentially sitting on it is right back in this area here now Instead of just having the tail coming out of the butt like so, I'm going to put a tiny little detail. And when it comes to uh, a lot of anime drawings, it's the subtle little observations that will set your, your drawings apart from other people who draw anime. I like to put a little divot right there because it exists. You, you look at a cat, that's how their, their booty is, typically. And now I'm going to add a little bit more substance to this bean slash potato shape. Uh, so we got the butt going on here. So we got a nice flatter surface going on that our kitty cat is sitting on. Maybe this butt isn't quite so rounded. Maybe it's a little, just a little bit more angular. So I'll put my little curve, my little divot right there. And I know it pretty much round in here is where I want to be. And I'm going to bring this in. So that way I can get a little bit of swoop because if the cat was facing in the other direction, your spine would pretty much be coming down in this way. So I'm gonna bring the body in just a tiny bit right here because this is where a shoulder would be. And then over here, going to have our arms. Bless you. And the fun thing when it comes to doing animals, anime animals and the like, a lot of the times it is not crucial to get hands, to get all five fingers in there and Sometimes it's just as easy as a little sock, which adds to some of the cuteness. The more detailed you get, the more realistic it gets. And there's a couple things you can do to combat that, but you don't, all, sometimes you just got to know where it, are the hands of this creature important? No, they're just average hands. We're not going to worry about it. Implied paw, just right there. And if you want to imply a little bit bigger of a paw, 
Just put a little round nubbin at the end of that arm. Ta-da! Implied paw. Uh, a lot of the time, sometimes it's just a matter of being subtle. A little subtle bump here, a little subtle uh, angle change there, and, you know, done. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the belly area to go in between here, the, uh, the front paw and the back. Now, a lot of times when you see animals sitting like this, again, you'll have this little divot, kind of similar to, you know, where tails meet, you know, little skin flaps here and there. It's always good to include those things. All right, so I know this is where the head is. It's kind of come out a little bit, and we're going to do a shoulder. Now, the shoulder is going to be a little bit more this way. This shoulder is going to be a little bit more this direction, also going to be kind of underneath the head a little bit. But this gives you an idea of how this animal is laying, leaning, looking. And a lot of these lines are going to get erased. They won't be there, but it's little guides to help you. Now we're going to do a little bit of shaping with the face. I want my animal to be looking down just a little bit more. Like so. More forehead, less bottom, and obviously I'm not going to make it round. But I want a nice little pointy kitty face or foxy face. So just kind of drawing in little lines round the side of the face here. And then once you get that line the way you like it, then you're pretty much trying to mirror it over on the other side. And there, and there. And I'm going to go for kind of a, one could call this a star shape if I pointed this end and I pointed this end, but I'm not. Uh, still fairly star shaped. And by the angle of the cheek fuzz, by making it more this angle, I can add a little bit of a more look. If a creature's looking over its shoulder like this, uh, this side of the head is going to be a little bit higher than this side of the head. So, let's see here. Just going to round this area out and I'm going to make it nice and narrow. Uh, however pointier you make it, the longer the face is going to end up being. Uh, so yeah, but because of this intersection area, we know roughly where our eyes should be. So I want to go for a nice big wide eye and that is crucial in any cutesy kind of drawing that you are doing. Big eyes. You want humongous eyes. Unreal unrealistically proportioned and then when you go to do the the interior area draw your little dot your little mark then a swoop and a swoop now you got a cute adorable giant eye it is up to you if you want to put a pupil inside of the eye or not with my overall design I'm not worrying about a pupil And I want a little bit of this bottom eyelid to come past the edge of the iris here. And there we go. Now that I know roughly how big I want my head and everything, I'm going to go ahead and put in an ear. And just like the previous week, what you can do with this part is you can go ahead and draw all this, get another piece of paper, trace the eye, trace the general head shape, trace the ear, turn it around, flip it over, and try to uh, mimic putting it underneath this sheet of paper and mimicking and tracing what you did on this side to try to line it up 
but at least making sure that it's perfectly even steven on both sides more practice you get the better off you're going to be at trying to do it freehand but if it's something where you really need to get it done perfectly for something in particular you're not practicing go ahead and do it that way I'm just going to erase some of these extra lines, clean some things up for the next part. And this is where we can start adding a little bit of details. So uh, I know I want a small, tiny mouth. That's one of the other things that go with cute animals, chibis, a lot of those different things. Uh, sometimes it's just the a little line and that's all you need and a tiny little nose And then now I'm going to do the chin. I'm going to just do a little bit more detail on this chin here and just kind of connect the two areas. It's going to be a little bit different from just one smooth line, just a little bit more detail. There we go. Just to add a touch of cuteness. add a little bit of nose to it and from doing that that tells me and here's an example of why not to draw dark until you're at the end uh, by drawing the nose line straight down from the eyes the eyes are pretty much I'm happy where they are that's where they should be uh, well I see my nose and my mouth is pretty crooked from where those should be so that's gonna be a pain in the butt to erase and redo and this is an example of where it's not going to erase fully. But it is what it is in this particular case. That's why I have my other under drawing finalized and finished. I'll work on that instead of this one. But if this happens to you, you can get another sheet of paper and finalize everything once you figure out where everything should be here and make that your final drawing and just lay it over the top and trace your own work. But keep in mind to be careful and meticulous and detailed when you do tracing. Uh, otherwise it is always gonna look like you trace something. Okay. Now from this point, you've basically got all the blueprints and all the details you need to do a cute little critter of your own. Uh, you can change the tail however you want and add fur details. I'll go ahead and show you what I plan to do. 
but if you want to do things like instead of doing what I'm doing, I mean, it's easy enough to put a jersey on and different things like that. I'm going to do a Halloween themed one and I would like for all of you to do a Halloween themed one. It can be cute pumpkins, cute ghosts, what have you, anything that just inspires you Halloween because we're getting real close to that time and it's one of my favorite holidays so uh, that's what I'm more or less going for. What I'm going to go for is a ghost theme. Makes me feel ghost and what is something that I think of when I think of ghost well one of the things is I think of candles and how people will set out little candles and stuff like in movies and ghost movies and different things like that so I'm gonna draw little candles and it takes a little bit to figure and especially doing something like this to Try to evenly space everything. And since we're doing anime, I, when you think of, or when I think of Japanese culture and I think of Japanese ghosts, I think of that little fire that tends to like float above a ghost's head. So I'm gonna just do a little fire swoopies, like so. Okay, rough there. All right, and then I'm thinking about all the fur that I want to do because I like nice fluffy furry animals. And this great big gorgeous tail. And I'll erase that little hip right there. And when I'm thinking of the fur, I'm also thinking about, well, if I'm going for this ghostly fire thing, uh, whatever it is, uh, you can come up with your own backstory for your critter if you like. But when I think of this kind of stuff, uh, I'm thinking, well, I need to carry this, this theme of fire throughout the entire piece and so okay so if I make it a long-haired creature uh, I can get more of the concept and the idea of flames and the fur so that is what I'm going for and that's why I chose to make it a long hair And now I know roughly where the shoulder is. Won't need the neckline here. Redefine the face, make it a little bit more how I want it to be, how I'm imagining the fur to be fiery. And by doing what I'm essentially doing here, the uh, to make the the fur feel like it's fire, I'm turning the tips up of the fur quite a bit, so that way it feels because fire flows upwards, so therefore that's what's what's what. Now, when it comes to doing long-haired fur like so, it's easy to do short hair. It, it's done. You don't have to add any extras or any details to it, but as you can see with this tail, it's just a whole bunch of little marks, a lot like that. Very confident swooshes. Swoosh. And sometimes you got to give it a long area to sweep from. Like so. And that gives you the idea of fur, 
but at the same time, the more fiery elements are swooping, not giving as deep of a cut as in here. You got a lot more swoops and the hills and valleys and ups and downs and, and the like. I'm going to give her some cheekbones, him or her. Doesn't very much matter. No, it doesn't, Skinny. I'm going to give her a nice, him or her, doesn't matter. I'm going to give him a nice big mantle of fur, you know, light, nice and fluffy. If you know uh, Pokemon, an Arcanine kind of a thing, super fluffy in the front, nice and short hair in the back. And some of playing around with fur is also knowing when to stop. Um, at this point, I can tell my creature's face. It may not be as pointy as originally intended, but that's all right. I can tell the shape of this animal's face right here. Not every line has to meet up. Not every line has to be perfectly touching. but it tells you how the face is shaped and that's one of the keys of how it how to know when to stop and how to keep yourself from going overboard uh, and that's something that takes a lot a lot a lot of practice so let's see now i'm going to go for that more body mantle Take this body mantle, this extra fluff and floof, and I'm going to bring it around the back of where this body line is. That helps to feel like we're extra puffy in the front where the chest is, even though the chest is on the other side of the critter, uh, and helps to fill out other areas that we're going to be doing in just a second. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this side over here. This shoulder that I drew in earlier that I've lightly erased. Uh, that's just telling me roughly where where this side should go. I don't need it to be like all the way out to here, all this puff. That's kind of unnecessary unless it's a part of your design. But if you're wanting it a little bit slimmer, a little bit trimmer, I know where the shoulder should be. So I'm going to try to keep close to that. Now there are some areas where I don't have to stay as close, but I want to always be able to come back. like so. And now I don't even need the areas where the leg met. All right. And now I'm going to bring the man back where, you know, we were following the spine here. And where the spine is left, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a mark here for shading. Because this is where the spine is. The spine would be slightly lifted from the back, unless it's a very fat critter. Uh, the spine would be slightly lifted from the back, which would cause an area of shadow. And let's see, this is roughly where... I stopped, so let's And now I want to keep that idea of, I could just do the little bits of hair where, you know, more normal where, you know, like so where the hair is following in general is pointing along the body length 
but that was one of the decisions I made was to make the hair feel like fire and feel like it's lifting. So I won't be doing that. Instead, I'm going to be doing all these little short pieces again. It's okay if things do not touch and do not connect. Because this is implying that, yes, the, this fluff, this mantle fluff is going all the way down to here, down the back. It goes all the way around the body. Okay. Can't seem to keep a pencil in my hand. Now to help kind of connect this area to this area, I'm just gonna put a few little lines here and there. They're not gonna mount to much, but that just kind of implies shape. Here's some of that shoulder line coming back in. And because I'm using a shape that I've used over here, like this swoop, used a part of that swoop right here, that's a line that I've already used somewhere else within this fur pattern, that helps to imply, one, it being a nice long line, that this is nice long hair. And it also makes it feel like, oh, even though it doesn't have a tip or a curl on it, that it is still a part of all this critter. From here, we can do a little head dealy doos, whatever you'd like. Entirely up to you. And they don't have to be symmetrical because if you've ever looked at your cat, uh, markings on their heads and faces are never symmetrical. And I'm going to give the backs of the knees a little bit of tuft. And we're talking little tufts. There. Not a whole lot of nothing. Just enough to like, yes, the long hair back there. I'm going to shrink this area up just a little bit. Give a little bit of breathing room between where this mantle ends and, you know, the spine line here. And, uh, and remember, if I'm ever going too fast for you guys, there is a pause button. Use it. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to give some marks here. Eh, not quite right. I'm going to give these marks here to imply... You know, again, that spine continuing onwards. And to give the, the tail a little bit more dimension so that way it doesn't feel so flat. And these can be shorter, hashier lines, especially since this is the shorter, uh, shorter hair to end of the body. I'm going to go ahead and finalize that line there. And I see that I've had a little bit of an accident where this line came down in a curve and this line kind of came up in a curve. It's up to you to decide if accidents like that are good or bad. I'm deciding that it's good, but I'm going to change it just slightly. There we go. I'm going to make this part of the foot just slightly more rounded. So that way it feels like standing on the paw there. Cleaning up. And now for the ears. Put some fluff in the ears. And 
And I'm going to make the fluff kind of go outside of the edge of the ears. Not too much, though. I kind of want it to blend in with the rest of the fluff that's going on throughout the body. And I'm going to change the angle of that area there. Make it feel a little bit more fire-like. Make it going downwards a little bit. And here it's up to you if you want to erase an area like that if you would want. But it would not look bad if it was connected either. Especially if you're doing a multicolored creature, let's say um, the most of this creature was blue and I wanted this to be a lighter shade of blue. There would be no reason not to close that area up. I'm going to give my critter, critter a little bit of eyebrow. Sometimes it's just easier to turn the whole thing. There we go. Cute little face. And now for the candles around the outside area there. <sighs> now doing candles, I'm going to do them a little bit more waxy. And none of this is going, I'm going to intentionally put in some wavy lines and then some drips. Make sure you make the bottoms of the drips if you choose to do candles uh, with a little bulby area. I want to go ahead and complete that. And then candle shape. Now if you've noticed, this shape has been used, I've been using it pretty much throughout the entire thing in some way, shape, or form. For instance, this area. If I were to complete it. Flame shape. The eyes are a little bit flame shaped as well, or one could also call this a leaf shape pretty easily. As... <sighs> and I'm going to make top a little bit bigger than the overall square area. You can make a light, tall, pointy piece. When it comes to candles and melted candle wax, you really want uh, you really want things to feel rounded a lot of the time. With an occasional, you can get away with occasional peaks here and there, but when it comes to the melty, drippy part, you always want that to be nice and roundy and full filling. And just like that, round the ends, squiggle, squiggle. Not all of them. You don't want every single one of them to have a long drip area. You need some feeling of variety. And make sure to change your candle directions every once in a while where you're how you're doing your flames so that way it doesn't feel too samey.
And there we are. We have our cute, adorable critter. And of course, I do want your critters to look completely different from mine. I don't want to see you doing halos of candles and things like that. This is my idea. No stealing, but you can take the overall pose. And I want you to show me what you've learned. And I want you to make it Halloween themed. Gives this is the season. And I decided again to go with the vacant, more vacant eyes. It kind of a feels more ghosty, especially with this kind of get up going on. And also, it's not necessarily necessary. Uh, it adds to the bigness and the fullness of the eyes where that just adds to the cute factor even more. Now when it comes to eyes like that, there's a couple of different ways to go about doing them. And there's no, especially when it comes with anime, cute anime critters, you can give them the same eyes as you would give your people eyes too. There's no rule against that. So you know the Those cute little with the nose. Blush marks, the the works, you know. All these kinds of eyes are perfectly fine. Um, it does seem that with when it comes to cutesy animals, what is considered a more sexy eye, um, or especially a heavily lined eye, still comes across as cute or adorable. Where with when you're trying to draw, draw cute chibi characters, this shape can be really if you have to make everything else super cutesy like for instance half the head is or the entirety of the head the whole size of the head is the entire size of the whole body you can kind of get away with it there but usually that ends up being more of a character that looks like this it's very hard to draw an eye like this on usually tends to be smaller drawings and less detailed drawings uh, always keep in mind that the amount of detail you end up putting into something can end up reducing its cute factor. Uh, so for instance, we can turn this into a cutesy kind of character. Pretty quick and easy and it's already turning into Powerpuff Girls. I should have known the second I started doing this hair. See, already on the extremely cute side without ever really putting in any facial details and really not even any clothing details. I guess I could put a line here for shoes. Maybe it's a skirt. We don't really know unless you put color in and like color the legs something different than the flesh color. So to give you some kinds of ideas. Uh, especially with little chibi characters like this, you don't want to put details of fingers, you don't want to put details in shoes. A lot of the times it is just a line. Um, like a detail would be adding angel wings, maybe. Like so. But those aren't even very detailed. And keep in mind when you're doing a lot of drawings like this, especially if you're drawing a character that is known for something or, uh, for instance, 
I play D&D, so a lot of people will have potions and magic items, and you'll see it a lot in animes too, where potions, magic items, this much gold, this much this, this much that. They got a horse, and everything tries to be thrown into the drawing. You got to learn how to edit that kind of stuff down because otherwise you're going to be drawing the character on a pile of treasure at that point with all these little items. These little items don't make the character or the person or the animal who they are. If this is a supernatural being, nothing about it says supernatural except for these candles flying around it. All, that's all the more I need to do. Now this creature, like uh, like in Pokemon, the drift blooms, they, they take the hands of young children and fly away with them, depending on what uh, game you play. But there's nothing in its design that says that it takes children's hands and flies away with them. Only the Pokedex really says anything about that, so... You don't need to add every single little thing of its back history and story. Pick the crucial things and just leave it at that. And sometimes less is a whole lot more. And by doing less, that's when you can get super cool expressions, over the shoulder looks, dramatic looks, uh, looks of sadness, looks of happiness. And then everybody, oh yeah, look at the ring of, oh, look how cute his eyes are. The ring of candles is cool, but look at how cute those eyes are. It allows for specialty details like the eyes to stand out more when there's less. If that makes any sense to you. We got a little angel cr critter. Make sure that's in frame here. We got a little angel person here at the top. We got a halo. We got wings. We don't need super giant detailed wings. We, if she has four wings. There we go. Four sets of wings. Now it's starting to look a little full, starting to get a little bit hard to tell, but it's there. And again, you can draw bigger, but if it looks great small, it's a really good indication it's going to look good big. Not always. Sometimes the bigger you get, if we did this little thing, this entire sheet, we could get a little bit more detail, maybe a little bit of lace around the bottom of the dress or maybe a little bit of lace on the shoes or something. We could get those kind of details, some ruffles. But overall, if the design looks good, teeny tiny, you're gonna have a much better time with it larger. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep in mind that the next video is going to be a live thing. So I want you to send me your pictures that you've done by then, and we're gonna go over them, we're gonna critique them. And then the next thing that we're going to do is you guys are gonna tell me what it is you want to learn in the next two classes, all right? So be thinking about that. What is it that you really, really wanna learn? And the like if everybody wants to learn how to do hands, then the next class is going to be on hands. If everybody wants to do shadows, then the next class will be on shadow. Pick something that you're having a very hard time with and I will do my best to help you. Even though it's not fun to do the things that are hard, that just means you have to practice those things a thousand times more. It, it, it's not fun, but if you want to become a great artist, that's what you got to do. Artists work the hardest on the things that they don't like to do. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy this and I will see you in the next one.